It's the night of October the 1st, 1948, and 25-year-old World War II veteran George F. Gorman is at the controls of his P-51 Mustang. It's a beautiful, clear, cloudless night, perfect conditions for night flying, and Gorman has decided to get in a few extra hours. It's 9 p.m., and as he soars over a school football field, down below he can make out the players running around. At around 500 feet or 150 meters below him is another plane. Gorman can clearly make out it's a Piper Cub. Looking around, the skies are clear. But then, out to the west, he notices an object. Gorman was an experienced pilot and knew how to identify aircraft. But with this one, he struggled. The object was lit and was flashing. That's no moon. But he couldn't make out any fuselage or control surfaces. Control, this is flight Gorman eight, decided six, to radio traffic six, control, six, just to check so what this strange traffic was. Control responded that there were only two aircraft in the area, the Piper and Gorman's P-51. Gorman told Control that there was something else in the sky and described the glowing aircraft. Air traffic control then contacted the pilot of the Cub, a Dr. A.D. Cannon. Cannon responded, affirmative, that they too can see the strange object glowing out to the west. Gorman radioed the tower once more. He was going in pursuit. Taking his Mustang to full power, the speed increased rapidly. Now flying at 400 miles an hour, a shade under 650 kilometers an hour, Gorman tried with a classic dogfight maneuver to get behind the UFO, but it was no use. In straight line speed, the UFO kept just out of distance. It seemed to be lit from the inside. The light would blink until the object sped up, when the blinking would stop, but the object would burn very brightly. But Gorman wasn't done yet. As the object turned, he maneuvered the plane to cut the corner, making just a bit more distance each time. Then finally making a sharp right turn while at 5,000 feet altitude, he approached the object head on. With a very fast closing speed, there was almost a collision, but the UFO flew just above his canopy. Gorman described the strange aircraft as being very small, maybe six to eight inches in diameter. At this point, Gorman lost sight of the glowing ball. Putting his plane into a turn, he managed to get sight once more. Now the object had done a U-turn and was racing towards the P-51. Once again, closing at rapid speed, Gorman was amazed to see the ball of light suddenly go into a hard vertical climb. Gorman put the P-51 into a climb, pushing to get higher and higher. At 14,000 feet, the Mustang stalled. The glowing ball still 2,000 feet above him. Recovering from the stall, he managed to push his plane even higher. Dr. Cannon and his passenger landed their cub at Hector Airport. Running into the control tower, Dr. Cannon and two air traffic controllers, Al D. Jensen and H. E. Johnson, watched the incredible dogfight through binoculars play out over the airfield. Johnson said that the UFO was round, light, and perfectly formed with no fuzzy edges or rays leaving its body traveling at a high rate of speed, and it was fast enough to increase the spacing between itself and Gorman's fighter. The object now went into a steep dive. Seeing the orb below him, Gorman pushed the Mustang's nose down to intercept. Gorman later said, I am convinced that there was a definite thought behind its maneuvers. I'm further convinced that the object was governed by the laws of inertia because its acceleration was rapid, but not immediate. And although it was able to turn fairly tight at considerable speed, it still followed a natural curve. When I attempted to turn with the object, I blacked out temporarily due to excessive speed. I am in fairly good physical condition, and I do not believe that there are many, if any, pilots who could withstand the turn and speed affected by the object and remain conscious. The object was not only able to outturn and outspeed my aircraft, but was able to attain a far steeper climb and was able to maintain a constant rate of climb far in excess of my aircraft. The plane, in a deep dive now, started to gain on the UFO. But just as he got close, the glowing ball went into a vertical climb. Gorman tried to chase, but it was no use, and the strange aircraft slipped beyond the sight of Gorman and the other observers. Control, did you see what I just saw? Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm gonna report that. The US Air Force investigated, and checking the P-51 with a Geiger counter, they found that it was radioactive. 
more so than other fighters, and concluded that maybe it had been close to a nuclear-powered aircraft. Although they later said it was a weather balloon, and even the planet Jupiter, even though Jupiter was below the southwestern horizon, and at the time Gorman broke off pursuit, he was chasing the target in a vertical ascent up to 14,500 feet. I've never seen anything like it, Gorman told a local newspaper following the October the 1st, 1948 event. If anyone else had reported such a thing, I would have thought they were crazy. Gorman was largely silent on the events of that day, eventually retiring at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in 1969. He never spoke publicly about the encounter again, although apparently he did tell friends. He was never convinced that he had been dueling with a lighted balloon for 27 minutes. Gorman passed away in 1982. We hope you like our new channel. For more Yarn Hub mystery, please like and subscribe. Thank you.